I got tempted to to just drop the ball and go find a job and there were offers but I kept thinking so I strongly feel that this is the core of my being this is my life's purpose if I if I go get a job I might be attached to the money so much that I actually forget my vocation and so I said no I'll I'll, I'll stick to this I'll keep doing consultancies and blah 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 till you know we make ends meet for the organization and that same 2015 things were so thick i remember this time i had just uh, done a number of consultancies and then paid for the volunteers their stipend paid for a number of things paid for everything and forgot to pay the house rent and, and forgot that i needed house rent money for food my siblings education and you know all that and a friend of mine and I were having coffee around that same time and I told her, "What? You know what? You're going to pay for this coffee and I don't have rent. I don't have nini nini." She told me, "You know what, Karen? Yeah, we know you're very passionate about young people and youth empowerment in Africa. But do you think these young Africans actually know that you care about them so much that you've given up everything for them that you don't even have food or rent and whatever?" I said, "No." And she said, so we have supported you as your friends and we see your vision, we see where you're going and it is great, but it is time you get a job. And and she took me to her ATM and counted the money and told me this is for rent, this is for food, this is for this, this is for that. But for now, let's go get you a job and then after we make money, you will come and run this. And yeah, I... I thought, yeah, I, I think it's time I, I got back into employment. Mm. But the question of dignity kept, you know, pulling mm. at me. And, and I kept saying, you know what, this might just work. But again, it's so disappointing and so heart-wrenching that I don't know whether it's really going to, to work but i so believe that kenya needs leaders who are ethical leaders who care about people empathetic leaders leaders who are competent and qualified to lead us in different sectors of society so let me keep at it but i'll be honest 2015 time came when i i, I stopped time came when i stopped um and I remember my younger sisters then, it was now their turn. They were talking to me and telling me, you know, Karen, we're not letting you give up. Hmm. Um, and no, God cannot have brought you this far to let you Maybe, down. Yeah. Hmm. And why don't you use this rock bottom? You're feeling you failed at everything. Why don't you use this rock bottom as a stepping stone for your foundation for the future? Hmm. And, and it was difficult to believe them. Yes, I, I'd, I'd hear what they're saying and, and say, yeah, that that's true. But look at me. L look at where it's been. It had been like four years, mm -hmm. nothing forthcoming. Um, I went to so many pitching competitions. I learned to pitch better. Mm -hmm. I learned to do proposals better. But mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. many organizations were like, no, youth organizations, mm -hmm. no structures, nothing. Mm -hmm. No, we, we don't believe in, mm -hmm. in, in that. Mm. Um, so one of my sisters then took my laptop and started responding to emails, started reaching out to different people. And at some point she would actually force me and tell me, no, 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 Karen, you have to dress up. You have to go to this meeting. Mm. And then slowly by slowly, sort of hope started coming back. Mm. Um, then 2016, again, of course, no funding. Mm. 2017 towards the end again of no beginning no funding and at this point i was sure this is it mm. like this is it like it, it's over and then i was serving as the chair of the board of um, the youth congress mm. and youth congress was uh, is, is an organization um that serve young people in serves young people in informal settlements um, supporting them with, with skills and um, human rights issues, participation, you know, issues around that. Mm. And Ford Foundation was uh, giving them a grant um, to support their work. Mm -hmm. And they needed to speak with the board chair. Mm -hmm. So I went for the meeting. Mm. Um, and when we were done, I said, um, 
I am so inspired that there is an organization that is actually ready to, to work with and support a youth serving organizations working for young people. Mm. Like this is so inspiring because I have not met any organization in the last like over five years. Um, and I, I said, I run a youth organization and this is what we do. This is what we've been doing for the last number of years. Um, would you be this organization that believes in us to actually just be that last hope we're waiting to then get to the next level? And the gentleman said, oh, yeah, I had actually done research about, you know, the work of Emerging Leaders Foundation and I was going to ask you about it. So he said, hmm, OK, I like the work you're doing. Um, draft a concept, share and le let's look at it. Mm. So it was back and forth, back and forth for like six months. Then finally they said, OK, we will give you your first grant. Hmm. And the gentleman came to the office because then so by then we had shifted and were being hosted by another organization mm -hmm. um, around Riverside area. And so he came to do a due diligence mm -hmm. um, on the organization. And so he asked questions like, do you guys have a board? Yes. Where are the minutes? I, I didn't know where the minutes were. Do you have policies in place? No. Do you have this and that organizational structure? No. Do you have contracts? I didn't even have my own contract. I didn't even know I needed a contract in the first place. Mm. And so he looked at us and he said, wow, you are actually doing something on the ground, just like a number of youth organizations. Mm. And you may not have structures and all those things that are critical, mm. but we want to be that first organization that believes in you guys. But you have to make sure that you put in place all the structures and systems for the next one year that you will then give us hope as, a, as an organization to partner with other youth organizations and support youth serving organizations because many funders and donors go to established organizations. Many youth serving organizations are struggling, trying to, to carve their niche and you know, all that. Mm. So 2017 was the first year we got our first grant from Ford Foundation and it was such a lease of life. Mm. We were able to do so much work in the counties. Mm. It was actually a launching pad to county mm. work. We mm. have a presence in 15 counties in Kenya, mm. um, supporting young people to mm. understand devolution and participate, make their voices heard. Mm. Then, of course, a few more mm. partners started coming on board. Mm. And then I signed up for a number of uh, fellowships mm. to just understand how do I lead better? How mm. do I lead myself better? Mm. Um, because then, remember, I was doing consultancies elsewhere, mm. then serving at Emerging Leaders Foundation. Mm. I had never taken a, a break, like mm. leave for mm. like over 10 years. Mm. Um, and so I, I burnt out at mm. some point. Mm. And I didn't know that was burnout. I had never heard of anything called burnout. Mm. And I remember, and, and the board, whenever the, we would meet with the board, the board the board chair would say, Karen, just make sure you're working with a team and, and not alone because you need a team. You will burn out. And yeah, so remember, <laughs> we didn't have money to pay staff. Mm, mm. So I would I would be the trainer. I would be this. I, I would be like everything in the organization. Hey, burnout came. Oh, it was crazy. So I go to see the doctor. Um, I get to do different tests and then he looks at it and tells me everything is normal then starts asking me questions about lifestyle when did you last take rest and i'm just sitting there trying to remember it had been like roughly about 10 years and i was like you know what you have to stop you have to take slow down a break mm. yes mm. slow down mm. At least for the next two weeks, mm. do nothing. And I wondered, what do you mean do nothing? All my life I have known work. Like I have to work mm. Monday to Monday. Mm. Work into the night, wake up in the morning working. So two weeks, no work, what would I be doing? Mm. And he said, young lady, you know what? If you do not stop, your body will stop you. That was a wake up call. I took a break, traveled, went away to just reflect and relax and take it easy. And that's when I discovered the power of self-care. So now I'm such a big champion for 
self-care for individuals especially leaders because i think a lot of times leaders imagine they have all the answers they have and and the people who follow leaders or people who are led imagine leaders have all the answers and they need to know everything they need to be perfect but no leaders also struggle leaders have moments when they don't know what to do or they 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 don't know what the right decision is mm. so leaders need to take care of themselves mm. body soul mind and spirit mm. it's so critical it's mm. critical mm. 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 But, so you you take this time you you rest a bit mm-hmm. you can can have a glass of water first yes it's good it's very uh we, do you need to take a break okay let's take a break and then we, we pick it from there